Okay, here we go. I believe we are recording, if I remember this correctly. Uh, and I don't know if people said, can you send the video? So I'm going to try to send it. Maybe. We'll see. I can't tell if it's going to work or not. Um, but here's the, um, there's the review sheet right there, as I recall. Let's see. Maybe if I make it just a little bit bigger. All right. Um, so we're seeing that and maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, and then the thing go right there. All right, so let's look at what we have right here. So it's like stuff in the Constitution about national powers and how much. So this is the federalism section of this test. So I'm going to try to go maybe. I'm going to pull the PowerPoint and go to maybe all oh, these court cases or so. All right, so check your, check your review sheet. All right, and that makes me a little nervous that that happened. Ooh. I don't really like that. But at any rate, all right, um, here we go. So it's the last clause. So it's Article 1, Section 8. So it's creating the implied powers. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 18, 1 through 17 were all the different uh, enumerated powers that we learned. And we'll take a look at those in just a minute. Uh, so it was strict and loose construction. Hamilton's the guy that says... He wants to create the bank. Jefferson says you can't do it. It's not in the Constitution. That's strict construction. Uh, Hamlin says the elastic clause implies it. Uh, and so it creates these implied powers. Understood without saying. Goes without saying. Stretches the power of government. It's been used to create a lot of stuff. National bank, build interstates, dams. I don't think I said dams. The Hoover Dam. All right. By a Republican. Prohibit discrimination. Harvard Land and Motel. Remember, it's the interstate commerce. Implied powers. All right, so there's the review. All right, uh, okay, then there's the the names for national powers. Die, remember that? So delegated, that means given to the national government by the Constitution, implied by the Elastic Clause. Inherent powers by virtue of being a national government. Enumerated powers, you know, so the listed are number ones. Express means stated. Exclusive, only the national government can do this. For example, money. States can't print money. All right, the acronym is DIE from the movie Nat Flash Gordon. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay, so then there's the two cases, and so then I'm going to try to find the review sheet, uh, whatever, wherever it went. I wonder if I went over here. There it is. Boom. Boom. Let's take a look. All right. <clears throat> so over here, we've got the two cases. So the McCullough versus Maryland was about taxing the bank. State of Maryland. States, what was it? We learned we learned it last year, but we're looking at this year in eight push. The original Democratic Republican Party was in favor of state banks, not a national bank. Uh, so Maryland's going to tax the national bank. They don't like it. McCullough, I'm spelling his name wrong, if you notice. It's M-U-C-C-L-L-O-C-H. Uh, but he's the agent for the U.S. government. He's the president of the bank, the cashier of the bank, but he's not paying it. You're saying you're hurting, you know, the state can't tell the national government what to do. All right. And so Marshall is the chief justice, and he says, you know, we've already decided in the Hamilton years there's a power to create, applied power to create, create a bank. If you can tax it at 10%, you can tax it at 100%. Supremacy clause Supreme Clause land. So it's the two clauses. The elastic clause plus the supremacy clause means the U.S. government wins, the state loses. All right, the other one is Gibbons versus Ogden. Ogden, and actually Robert Fulton. Again, I'm adding a little bit to our knowledge from last year. Ogden was working with the guy who invented the uh, steamboat, Robert Fulton. And, you know, that's going to carry goods up and down the Hudson River. It's really the key river. Uh, and then Gibbons is given a coastal license by the national government, the federal government, and, well, the national government wins. Okay? Uh, supremacy clause. Okay, so boom. There's Gibbons versus Ogden, McCullough versus Maryland. Okay, so then we have those powers. All right, so you got the economic and the military, and they're kind of logical. The six, you got a tax, coin, and borrow money. Regulator, state commerce, so one and four are really the big ones where the improvements on the Oracle's Confederation are made. Then the two bad ones, bankruptcy laws, counterfeiters. All right, the military ones, war, army, navy, you know, kind of makes sense. Call up and train the militia, then the pirate stuff. So those are military enumerated powers. And then we have that other one. Remember, we had that awful acronym. I apologize for that. 
um, appealing to the worst part of parts of our soul, yada, yada, yada. But those are the other <clears throat> um, enumerated powers. So then we have that, uh, and then the grants and aid. So let's go over here and see. So boom, there it is. The six, the six, the seven, the two, um, two core cases there. So then you kind of shift gears on federalism. All right, let me take a breath. Pause in your thinking. Go back over here. The grants and aid. So grants and aid is money going far from the national government, federal government to the states. Categorical grants is for a specific purpose. Very specific thing like school lunch. States like block grants better. Uh, that's for more general purposes, like for education generally. Then there's other stuff. Project grants, the states apply for. Uh, mandates are orders given without any money attached. Uh, no child left behind. What was it? The ADA. Was that the name of it? Americans with Disabilities Act. You got to have ramps when you're building buildings. All right. Um, so you had that little review, and we go back over here and we see what we have next. All right. Uh, then we got the models. Models of federalism. So, so there it is. Dual federalism is the layer cake. Everybody knows exactly what we're doing. That was the federalism that we had throughout most of our history, really, until that book chapter we said kind of muddies the waters at the time of the New Deal. All right, uh, so then the marble cake is the cooperative federalism. So the feds and the states are working together. The states are working together. Traditionally, since the time of the New Deal, this is a liberal thing because we, you know, liberals don't like the sounds of state states' rights. They don't like the national government telling states what to do about segregation. All right, there's other stuff. There's competitive federalism, comp uh, permissive federalism, new federalism. Doesn't look like it little really made the cut on the review sheet, does it? All right, um, so. Just kind of understand that dual federalism is a conservative thing traditionally. Cooperative federalism is a marble case, is a liberal thing traditionally. That is kind of flipping in the days of Trump with a very conservative national government. So liberal states kind of trying to stand up to Trump. All right. Uh, and then here we go. So the advantage of federalism. So it's going to spell C C C U T E, right? So it's a compromise between unitary and uh, confederal system. It's in between those. So it's Aristotle finding the mean. Keeps government close to us, not remote. So there are state leaders that I've had conversation with over, over the years. And so uh, we can impact our state government, even though we can't really impact uh, the national government too terribly much. Checks and balances. All right. Uh, conservative states on a liberal federal government, liberal states on a uh, conservative federal government. All right, the, the states check the power of the national government. Unity, not uniformity. So it's the United States of America, but you know, different states, different parts of the country don't have to agree. All right, the E is experimentation. They serve as policy labs. Um, Obamacare was born in Massachusetts. Welfare reform, Clinton's welfare reform was born uh, in Wisconsin. I said in class, Whatever state comes up with a good solution to like the opioid crisis is going to be copied by the national government. And then, hey, three of these guys were governors. Governor Carter, Governor Clinton, Governor Bush. So governor, chief executive, you know, whoever wins this um, Georgia governor's race, both of them are pretty young. So, you know, if they have a successful uh, governorship, you know, maybe they're running for president in 10 or 15 years. <coughs> okay, so there's the functions of federalism, advantages of it, CCC, UTE. All right, and then finally the debate. So the decentralists on federalism, those big names, Jefferson, Calhoun, Reagan, Scalia, and Thomas, and they say the states made the Constitution, you know, because states sent delegates to uh, Philadelphia there, and then they really like the Tenth Amendment uh, that's reserving powers for the states. Okay, the centralists are Hamilton originally, Lincoln, the Roosevelt, and Johnson. First three words of the Constitution are we the people, not we the states. And, you know, the argument, one argument is that the national government kind of speaks for all the people. Here's Johnson, the national government. 
kind of overwhelming Richard Russell and the Saints when it comes to civil rights. All right, and looks like that's got us. Let's go over here and see what we got on federalism, see if there's anything else. U.S. versus Lopez. So we read about that one. You know, you remember, I don't really have a good slide about it, but he brought the gun to school, uh, and he got arrested under the school free, free gun, safe schools, free no guns, Act and then, like the argument of Lopez and the state is that it's an overreach, and so it's declaring that law unconstitutional. And the U.S. is saying, Yeah, but a, a gun is interstate commerce, uh, but then you know, it's a school zone and it's the public school and it's the state that's doing this. And so, if the gun is interstate commerce, anything's interstate commerce. Uh, was the ruling. And so then we kind of said, uh, hey, a private school it might apply to, but not a public school. All right, so that's U.S. versus uh, Lopez, and y'all did a good job of that when we talked about it. All right, then you got ideology. So if I go over here, and then I go way down, I mean way down, and let's see if I can go way down. All right. Way down some more. All right, way down some more. And we're almost there, and boom. Okay, Democrat or Republican. All right, and so we looked at ideologies. And so you said you're a liberal if you're with uh, Democrats all the time on the economic stuff coming out of the 30s and the value stuff, abortion, gay marriage coming out of the 60s. And you're a conservative if you're always with the Republicans. If you never like the government, so you're with the Republicans on money, the Democrats on values, that's libertarian. If you're an old foggy dinosaur like me and you're with the Democrats on the value stuff, but, I'm sorry, Democrats on the money stuff, Republicans kind of on the value stuff because you believe, because I believe in right and wrong that there's a moral law that kind of outweighs the law made by man, that there's a higher law. Because I kind of like Martin Luther King there in 1963 and his critique of the immoral segregation laws. Well, that's kind of that Martin Luther King, the Pope, populist kind of position there. Okay, so those are the ideologies. All right, so then we looked at... The Democrat supporters, we kind of understand that. Hey, pause it for a second. If you need to look at them for a second, you got to learn them. Uh, and then the Republican supporters in recent years, we kind of added native as to that. <clears throat> we, we go over there, and then we go down. Uh, and so there's that stuff. There's the ideologies there. So then we go to socialization. All right, and we go back. All right, and we go down. All right, so there it is. Socialization, that technical definition, is how you get your ideology. Number one reason you get your ideologies from your folks. All right, most folks kind of believe like their parents do. All right, on top of that, you got schools. Our job here as a high school is to make you, make you patriotic, not liberal conservative. Colleges kind of work to make you a little more liberal. May or may not, and research shows us they're fairly effective at that. All right, and then... Religion impacts your ideology. Traditionally, religion made people liberal. What is it we were looking at last time? That he's making a Christian argument for civil rights. All right. Uh, but then in Will the 70s and 80s... come to the main office at the high school? Uh, being Christian is becoming conservative. So you kind of had that turning point. All right, and then, well, it kind of depends on what kind of religion you got. Why Protestants are very conservative today. Jews are liberal. Jews identify historically with oppressed groups. And Catholics are kind of populist and cross-pressured and kind of a swing vote, as are Hispanics in a certain way and the overlap between ethnic and religious identities. All right, uh, so then you look at race. All right, uh, and you got the story of African Americans. Lincoln was the first Republican, so historically African Americans were Republican. That's changes starting the Depression really gets cemented in the 60s. 
All right, uh, Latinos tend to be populist with the exception of Cubans, which, who are pretty conservative. All right, there's a gender gap. Women and men, my goodness, from the stuff last week, we really know that. And, you know, I think the gender gap spread out even a little more last week, a little bit. Okay, so you got that. Bum, bum. All right, so then if you go over here, you look and um ooh now look at your review sheet we need to add to that review sheet dang it political culture well you asked for your review sheet so here it is all right and a recording and the eight, you know, the elements of political culture. And the acronym is Lied Crap. All right, liberal individualism, uh, equality, democracy, common man, ideal, rule of American dream, and patriotism. So if we go back over there, so there it is. All right, so liberty and equality, the first two. Pol uh, we believe in freedom. It's political equality, not equality of result. Okay, individualism, you're supposed to think for yourself, not let the group think for you. Uh, I don't know, think about the transcendentalists. They were big on that. Democratic consensus, majority rule. So we kind of believe in majority rule, believe in minority rights, but believe, you know, we the people. This government was made by the people. All right. Uh, all right. Then the rule of law. All right. Um, justice and the rule of law. We get upset if, hey, Kavanaugh doesn't get a fair shake, if he's guilty until proven innocent, was the argument by on the conservative side of that. All right, uh, patriotism, you know, we're supposed to be patriotic. Reagan, City on a Hill. American Dream uh, and the Common Man, man Ideal. All right, so it kind of comes out to lie crap. Liberty, liberty, so if you go back over there, liberty, individualism, Equality, democracy, common man, ideal, rule of law, American dream, patriotism. All right, so then you go back. Let's see what's down here. Yeah, see, that's all political party stuff. So then I go back up to civil rights. Let's see if I can do that. Yep, almost, almost, almost. A little bit of civil rights. And so there it is. All right, so now. Um, first off, let's go ahead and make that distinction and add it to the review sheet. McKenzie, that ain't right. Civil liberties versus civil rights. And so what we said was civil liberties is freedom from the government, whereas civil rights, the government's helping you out. You need the government on your side. So the government needed to help African Americans out to overcome de jure segregation. That's the Birmingham stuff. That's the Jim Crow laws. That's the segregated schools. Uh, the civil rights movement uh, has been less successful in overcoming de facto segregation. We've got a pretty diverse class. Uh, not a lot in the way of African Americans, right? Uh, and so even our class is kind of de facto segregated. All right, so that has proven hard to fight against in the North, hard to fight against all over the country. Okay, Pleasant versus Ferguson is the separate but equal ruling, and the idea is it does not right, violate the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Okay, so the Brown versus Board of Education, there's two of them. Part one, hey, separate is never equal. Part two, you got to do with all deliberate speed. Uh, civil Rights Forces said that means fast. Uh, segregationists said that meant slow. All right, so then you got like the stuff, the events. So, I mean, I'll let you look at them. You can pause them and look at them. So, there's Birmingham, so that's where we were. Children's March taking place right after the letter from Birmingham jail. March on Washington. All right, so then the law of the Civil Rights Act is in a de jure segregation. Voting Rights Act, and then the literacy test and so forth after Selma. Okay, and so then the today's issues. Affirmative action, the Bakke case is about affirmative action. 
affirmative action was upheld, but quotas wasn't. He got in eventually. Able so is a reverse discrimination. Uh, courts rule race can be a factor, but it can't be quantitative. It can't be a quota. It can't be a number. So then you got the two in Michigan. So you had a point system on undergrad, so that was too much, and you had a law school system, so that was, you know, that was okay. All right, Michigan ended up outlawing it altogether. Uh, and then you got busing. And so the problem was... Even if you don't discriminate, you know, cities were segregated, so schools get desegregated. You got a couple of court cases. The Charlotte case said busing was all right. Seattle said, again, you can't use that as a rate. The only factor in the Remember Titans movie is a movie about busing. Then we didn't get that far. All right, and so we go over here. We go down here. All right, Texas approach. The Texas approach... Uh, was the 10% plan. So you do it by, uh, you, you do well enough in any school, you automatically get into Texas. All right, the rest of that, you know, we dealt with. All right, so not too bad. It's really more ideas than it is details. So I think we find that this particular video is shorter, right? All right, so let's see what we can do about stopping the thing.